In this episode, one will show you how a British man hungry for victory dethroned one of the pound for pound kings, the fabulous Kostiat Zoo. All right, boxing fans, buckle up because we're diving into one of the most epic showdowns in boxing history. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe, folks, because you won't want to miss this. On June 4th, 2005, the legendary boxer Kostya Tzu was defending his IBF title in the light welterweight division for the fourth time. The 35-year-old Tzu came to Manchester to face the local favorite, British fighter Ricky Hatton, who was 10 years his junior and boasted an impressive record of 38-0 with 25 knockouts. Unfortunately, the bout with Hatton turned out to be a disaster for Kostya Tzu, burying his champion career for good. Before we dive into the fray, let's rap about these warriors, man. In November 2001, Kostya scored a second round knockout against the previously undefeated American Zab Judah, becoming the champion in three versions WBC, WBA, IBF. I talked about this fight in previous episodes. You can find a link to it in the description. Kostya remained undefeated for eight years. However, he didn't step into the ring too often after his loss to Phillips and before meeting Hatton, he only had 13 fights. So, it's not surprising that in the bout with Ricky, Kostya retained only one belt, the IBF Super Lightweight Champion. Hatton, with a record of 38-0 and 25 knockouts at the time of the fight, looked like a machine. He defeated Vince Phillips in 2003 quite convincingly, albeit on points. Ricky demanded championship fights, and on April 6, 2005 in Manchester he finally got his chance. The unbridled intensity with which Hatton fought his fights was stunning, and the main question was whether Tzu would be able to find the key to his opponent's style. It was a fierce battle between two evenly matched opponents. Right from the start of the fight, the rivals set a high pace, often engaging in close combat and testing each other's resilience with hard, short shots. Zhu noticeably more technical, Hatton younger, more aggressive, and relentless. As expected, the start of the fight was left to Hatton. After dropping the first two rounds, Kostya started to gradually turn the tide of the fight. Kostya hit more often, but the Britain's constant pressure did not bear fruit. It is worth noting that Ricky Hatton took a huge number of blows, but continued to follow his plan and stubbornly moved forward. And this plan worked. The challenger maintained a torrid pace and continually took away Tzu's punching room by staying on top of him and draining his energy on the inside. Tzu can keep up this pace. Under two minutes remaining, the UK Colin Hart from the Sun. Of course, those are... 
firm as he comes in, although there was a nice right hand, but it's not hurting him. Hatton isn't showing as much of the boxing skill as he did against Ben Tacky. He's been able to acclimate to the UK timings very often. A savage body attack and hooks from both sides put Tzu back on his heels, and the great champion struggled to find worthwhile counters. Half, he's letting them fight on the inside, probably rightfully so. Who feels he can beat you and it gives you constant pressure. Yes, so that too would be these rounds. One thing he's not doing is getting good is over as the jab starts to find a home along with the assault. And then he was able to land good body shots. Steve here, late in round six, Pat missing with the right hand. In the seventh round, Costia delivered a nasty left uppercut that dropped Hatton for a knockdown. Furthermore, there was a sense that the Tzu of yesteryear would have surely capitalized on the opponent's vulnerability and ended the fight prematurely. However, in the second half of the bout, the 10-year age difference and the challenger's superior conditioning started to take a toll. It seemed like Hatton should have worn himself out with such an energy-draining style, but it was Tzu who appeared fatigued. Starting from the 8th round, the Brit dominated the ring, outboxing the champion and at times simply beating up on Tzu. The Australian boxer had a tough time, but he occasionally fought back, although it was evident that Tzu's punches were being thrown with his last ounces of strength. It's worth mentioning the referee's work as well, who allowed the Brit to clinch a lot, engage in his favorite dirty boxing, and land illegal blows. Tzu was warned several times for low blows, even though they were hitting the elastic band of Hatton's boxing trunks, while Ricky could blatantly hit below the belt and not be penalized. It's unlikely that Tzu lost that evening solely due to the referee's actions, but the referee definitely gave the ring's host a certain advantage. However, in the end, Haddon's youth played a decisive role. In the final rounds, he was fresher and simply outworked his opponent with intensity. In the 11th round, Haddon continued to storm Tzu, while the champion barely responded to the Brits' attacks. Well, 
Before the final round, Haddon's corner continued to prepare the Brit for the decisive ending, but it turned out to be unnecessary. Zhu sat on his stool and hardly responded to his corner's questions. He only silently attempted to stand up and enter the 12th round, but trainer Johnny Lewis didn't allow him to do so, throwing in the towel. It's over. It was absolutely the right decision. There was no chance of saving the fight by taking the last round. Haddon was ahead on the scorecards of all three judges, and Tzu could only be saved by a knockout. However, the champion was unable to knock out the Briton. In Manchester. Amidst the cheers of the local crowd, Haddon celebrated his victory enthusiastically, but at the same time, he paid tribute to Kostya. Yeah. And I think you'll agree. In if I can be half the champion Kostya Zhu was, I'd have been doing well, so give Kostya a great champion a round of applause. Well said. Well said indeed. And I am a very, very proud man. Uh, and I'm, uh, I'm not saying that it's the end of my career, maybe, maybe yes, maybe no, but I'm saying that today I lost to the better fighter. Zhu also left the ring to applause, which was given to him by British fans. Thus, Castillo lost his last fight in his career, although he announced his retirement later. After the fight, I was bleeding in the toilet. And it wasn't just for one day. Not the most pleasant feeling. It's like a ball piercing and slowly draining out, Kostya Tzu said in an interview. There are many reasons for the defeat, jet lag, acclimatization, but Tzu's experience simply couldn't withstand the youth, pressure, and Haddon's desire to win that evening.